much higher than it was a year ago at the same period. So uh, the import cover was then sufficient to be able to keep the peg, right? So there was no uh, uh, sort of um, um, overriding factor mm -hmm. of why they had then to increase the interest rate as opposed to keeping it steady. There, were, the, the, there was also uh, a mention of the Namibian economy in terms of it had grown, right? And uh, uh, the global uh, uh, sort of uh, risk to, to growth has not changed mm -hmm. to what mm -hmm. it was last month or at the previous MPC. And subsequently, uh, the bank felt or the MPC felt that uh, at this stage they did not see a need to increase. You must also remember that uh, the South Africa Reserve Bank, which have uh, a bit of a different uh, mandate as opposed to us, where ours is more price stability, right? They've got uh, uh, what, what we refer to as inflation targeting, mm -hmm. right? So inflation targeting means that their inflation rate or the central bank should work towards making sure the inflation rate is between 3 and 6%, right? And and all indications are that uh, the inflation in South Africa is coming back within the target range mm -hmm. between three and six. Mm -hmm. And uh, at their last uh, MPC meeting, they also did not uh, move in terms of increasing uh, their, their, their repo rate. Mm -hmm. So for all intents and purposes, uh, the Bank of Namibia felt that at this stage, there was no need to increase and I think that was well anchored within market expectations mm -hmm. uh, uh, because you, you do see inflation coming down uh, uh, in the domestic economy, mm -hmm. albeit at a much slower rate, right? Uh, but with the, there's still uh, the upside risk going mm -hmm. forward mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and the, second, in the second round effects that uh, the central bank always speaks about, I think could have been taken care of to a certain extent mm -hmm. with the previous increases. But what is also critical is that uh, there is what we refer to as the transmission mechanism, right? Now, the transmission mechanism is uh, the, the ability to, to be able to assess the impact of previous increases mm -hmm. in the interest rate. So, uh, and that can be felt over between a 12 to 18 month period, right? Mm -hmm. According to the Bank of Namibia themselves. So the point I'm making is that perhaps as part of that process, one, being able to say, look, the second round effects could potentially have been taken care of previous increases, but also for them to see an impact of the increase in the last 12 uh, uh, to 18 months. Right. Yeah, to see to what extent can that be felt in the economy? What is the impact thereof? And I think it makes sense that rates at this particular time had to be kept steady. Yeah, yeah. You, you touched there briefly on the domestic uh, economy, and I want to talk about that and, and how the repo rate would impact the domestic economy. I think knowing, of course, that this time around it, it remains unchanged is a bit of a sigh of relief, even though very short-lived. Um, but what Namibians want to know is, you know, how does it impact our you know domestic economy and and perhaps also are there any specific sectors or areas that are particular uh, particularly affected with you know changed repo rates yeah so essentially what it means especially this particular decision that was taken uh, it means that uh, what you are paying for your mortgage uh, last month remained the same right <laughs> it means that uh, that additional uh, 150 million dollars uh, remain in your pocket right as opposed to the rise that came at the previous uh, uh, at the at the previous MPC decision, so uh, at least you are able to budget for the next two months uh, mm -hmm. on the same sort of uh, 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 income that you have. So it's it's it, it's sort of a relief in a sense for the households, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and to a certain extent, households contribute quite greatly to the Namibian economy. On the other side is for businesses, right? Uh, it means that if you had a facility or you've got an installment or, or whatever it is that you have with the financial institutions, it means that, again, you're not paying more for a particular loan in terms of the cost of, of, of money. So there's a bit of a relief. But maybe to answer your question is that uh, now there's a sort of competing interest, interest that needs to be balanced, right? 
This competing interest needs to be balanced. On the one side, you have to try and make sure that you maintain the peg, all right, with South Africa, so that you don't have this huge capital outflow if your interest rates are too low in relation mm -hmm. to South Africa, and, and, and. But at the same time, South Africa uses uh, uh, the monetary policy as a tool to rein in inflation within the target mm -hmm. range, right? Now, the, uh, on the other side, uh, there's the conversation that uh, an increase in interest rates plans economic activity uh, to the extent that, so, if you're a business and the interest rate cycle that we've been into uh, mm -hmm. make it almost unaffordable for you to keep employees or a certain number of employees because it becomes a cost element, mm -hmm. it becomes a cost item on your operations. So it would mean that you might have to lay off uh, a certain uh, 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 employee or worker and that sort of is, is really the sort of uh, uh, the negative connotation that right. you could have with, uh, with interest rate. And then money also become unaffordable for businesses to access loans. And, and, and. But it must be balanced in the context that on the one side you've got inflation, mm -hmm. right, that mm -hmm. affects all of us. And then you've got interest rates that only affects a select few, if it were. Because remember that not all of us have got loans, mm -hmm. installments, credit cards, wealth banks. But all of us are impacted by inflation. Right. Yes. So once the, there's, a, there's a spike in, a, in the price of bread, we all feel it because we all eat bread, right? But when there's an increase in interest rate, uh, there is almost a knock-on effect and a terrible the direct effect on everyone. So that's really the balance of this competing interest that one needs to look. But going forward, obviously, uh, the, there is generally a view that uh, the direct link between credit-induced spending on the demand side mm -hmm. and the supply side disruptions needs to be explored. Whether this particular tool uh, that we have used since uh, the Keynesian economics and, uh, in, uh, uh, and, and, and credit being a function of spending and all of this, uh, if you go into economic theory, yeah. uh, needs to be explored. And because we're living in completely different times. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we're living with uh, supply side disruptions that have caused uh, the spike in inflation, uh, where we are paying more for, for goods and services. If you consider uh, how attractive uh, uh, the investment climate and the general Namibian economy is mm. in relation to what we perceived at the time perhaps to look at South Africa otherwise you would have this huge capital flight. Mm -hmm. You actually realize that there is now greater interest in Namibia's financial instruments right, as opposed to South Africa. Yeah. 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 So uh, that fear uh, in terms of uh, money leaving our shores because of lower interest rate also need to be looked in context because the dynamics have also changed. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the long and short of it is that look, there needs to be uh, a balanced approach in terms of this competing interest, but also uh, I think there needs to be perhaps new. Uh, uh, we need to look at uh, new ideas yeah. of what economic theory can tell us in relation mm. to how you deal with some of these new uh, dynamics that. Uh, uh, are faced by central banks globally. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Salomo, how does you know keeping the repo rate unchanged align with Namibia's long-term uh, goals and stability um, in terms of our economy? Well, the, the, this particular repo rate decision or MPC decision is really for the immediate, right? In terms of making sure that the overall objective of the bank is uh, uh, is, is is maintained. Right, which is price stability and given the conditions at play in terms of what the South African Reserve Bank did in terms of what, uh, uh, where, interest, uh, where inflation is going, uh, the, the, the current international uh, stock reserves that we have, uh, which is at a good uh, uh, level, so there's no need to sort of uh, fear that the peg could be unbalanced in a sense. Uh, so it gives us the certainty uh, that the Namibian economy and uh, the Bank of Namibia is still able to safeguard on investments, is still able to maintain its policy mandate, mm -hmm. and essentially 
the long-term benefits of economic growth is built on this level of certainty mm -hmm. where there's no deviation uh, or other uh, quick deviations or other uh, disruptive uh, uh, deviations for lack of a better word, disruptive in the sense that it's unexpected and a new decision is made that you are doing away with this or without, uh, with that. So you, you want to have that level of certainty uh, going forward as an economy. You want to be able to make sure that the independence of the central bank is safeguarded and, and, and that comes through, through some of these decisions that are made consistently with yeah. what the market ex expect. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Just uh, uh, your final remarks this evening, Mr. Hay? Well, I think uh, 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 our outlook, which came out yesterday, uh, was very much in line with what uh, the NPC decision came to. Mm -hmm. uh, we also felt it would, <coughs> it would, be, it would serve no purpose to, to increase interest rate at this stage. Um, we would also want to give uh, households and consumers a bit of relief and businesses <laughs> as well. And, uh, but I don't think that we are completely out of the woods yet. Mm -hmm. I think we need to keep an eye on core inflation as well. Uh, because really, <coughs> that's where the, the real indicators lie in terms of what is the impact of inflation. So I think it was uh, the right decision given the economic conditions that we find ourselves in. Mr. Hay, always lovely speaking to you. Thank you so much for your time and thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you for having me. That was uh, Mr. Salomo Hay speaking to us there. We'll be right back after.